2NURFM.com, a broadcast service of the University of Newcastle. All this week we're spotlighting Australian Engineering Week. It's a big week of activities and we're looking at those involved in what the participation is with the University of Newcastle. And I'm so pleased to welcome in my special guest this morning from the University of Newcastle School of Engineering, Laureate Professor Graham Jamison is with us. We've spoken before, Professor Jamison, and we spoke before about your Jamison cell that you put together, which has done amazing business, not just here in Australia in the mining industry, but right around the world. Uh, So I thought we might talk about that just briefly to give us a little bit of detail about what it does and how it has changed the mining industry. Well, the the field I work in is called flotation, and this is a a separation method that's used to recover very uh, valuable minerals from the rock in which they're found in, in nature. So first of all, you grind them up in water, you add a chemical which makes the valuable bits non-wetting and then you blow bubbles into the suspension. The bubbles attach to the non-wetting bits and leave the rest behind and then the bubbles float to the surface and form a froth and you can recover the the product then in the the froth. Well the Jameson cell was a a new way of doing this which I arose out of a research program actually that I had had been going for many years and um, I was trying to find out ways of uh, improving this, the capture of particles by bubbles. Mm. And I found a new way, a, a very, very simple way, uh, very cost effective, easy to build, low maintenance, cheap to run. And that was introduced into industry in this country more or less about 1980, I think. And it's now widespread around the world, as you it's said. It's embraced and, uh, by the world. Well. Yeah. I would hope so, <laughs> but it's certainly in my... I've got an amazing figure here. It's gone on to net Australia more than $26 billion in exports. That's how well it's done. So I think you may underplay yeah. it just a little. May, perhaps, but it, that's true. It's, it, we're almost up to $30 billion now. It's your modesty and, uh, that's underplaying it. Uh, <laughs> and, and congratulations to you on that. But you're further pushing the boundaries in your research, and you're now at a level where you're working on what's called the fluidised bed flotation cell. I'm very keen to find out about this this morning. Well, as I said, I work on flotation, Part of the, uh, and I mentioned I, I capture valuable particles. At the present time, people have to grind the, uh, the rock very, very finely to recover these particles because conventional machines can't, can't uh, remove them, can't float them because they're too violent. So I've been looking for a very, very calm, uh, quiet way of contacting bubbles and particles, and that's what this bed does. Now, the, the, the benefit is that if you don't, that, that the energy you use electricity, the greenhouse gases, all related to the fine final size of the grind. So if you don't have to grind so fine, you'll, you'll save energy, money, reduced CO2, all that sort of thing. And there's a big economic value in doing it. And the uh, so I, I'm, I have developed a technique which looks extremely promising. And I, I'm just you know, doing more research to find out the best way to put it into practice. At what stage would it be in at the moment? Ah, uh, well, look, it's 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 at the stage where the basic science has been done. Uh, now, the next stage would is uh, known as the valley of death because it's very hard to find money to to get the next stage up, um, and then the final stage is actually introducing it, commercialising it in industry. How far away so, do you think that could be? Oh, a couple of years. Still yeah, a actually. couple of years. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. Ah, is there a lot of interest in this? Yes, very, very much, much so, so yeah. because people understand the importance of it. And what see, it hasn't been done before; it's new. So it's not as if I'm making a minor change to an existing technology. I'm introducing something completely new. And, and anywhere and, uh, where there's a potential for massive reductions and savings is something I think people, especially in the mining industry, will be looking towards. Absolutely, but of course, what they want is low risk. They don't want to invest money or put in a new technology and then have it go bust in their plant because that could be very expensive. So what I've got to do is to reduce the risk by doing more and more research, finding out more and more about how it works so that we know when we put it in it's going to work. Do you foresee some possible overseas interest in this for investment? Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Because the, uh, the biggest, for example, it's very well suited to the copper industry. The biggest copper producer now in the world is in Chile. Mm-hmm. And the Chilean uh, people, are, are actually, energy is quite expensive there. So, the uh, the miners in Chile uh, would find this very useful, and I've had a lot of interest from them. 
Okay, this is amazing what you're doing, and it's just going to show our engineering department here really is at the forefront when it comes to research and devel development, just here in the University of Newcastle on the world scale, which is amazing. It, yes, it's a, I think we're doing very well. We're so proud of it. And, uh, you know, we, we, uh, we held our heads high in, in the world scene in engineering. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming in and telling us a little bit about your work and your developments and uh, just with us this morning. Thank you very much. Joining me from the University of Newcastle, the School of Engineering Laureate, Professor Graham Jamison at 2NURFM.